Great to see everybody this morning. Are you ready to praise the Lord? All right, we're going to find out. Come on. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything let everything that has breath that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'll praise in the valley. Praise on the mountain. Yeah. I praise when I'm sure, and I praise when I'm doubting. I praise when I'm numbered, praise when surrounded. Come on, church. Cause praise is the water, my enemies drowning. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise. Lord, oh my soul, praise the Lord, oh my soul, yeah, I praise when I feel it, and praise when I don't, come on, I praise when I know you're still in control, yeah, because praise is a weapon. It's more than a sign My praise is the shout That brings Jericho down Yeah, that's right As long as I'm breathing I got a reason to praise The Lord, oh my soul Praise the Lord, oh my soul I won't be quiet, my God is alive. How can I keep it inside? Hey. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Yeah. You praise because you're free, amen. How many's free in this place since morning? Hallelujah. Love it. Sing along with us, come on. I praise cause you're sovereign, praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater than you. I praise cause you're sovereign, praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true. Praise God, there's nobody greater than you. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Come on. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. to rise above maybe things that were difficult throughout this week, maybe throughout this year. But we want our faith to rise up. Amen, church? Be still, there is a healer. His love is deeper than the sea. His mercy is unfailing. And his arms a fortress for the weak. Let faith arise in this place today. Let faith arise. I need my hands to believe again. You are my refuge. You are my strength as I pour out my heart. 
Even in the Bible, we see King David, he would remind himself of God's promises when things were difficult. That's what we're going to do. Be still, there is a river that flows from Calvary's tree. Come on, every voice, lift it up. A fountain for the thirsty, your grace washes over me let faith arise let faith arise yeah. I lift my hands to believe again you are my refuge you are my strength as I pour out my heart these things I remember He's faithful. You are faithful, God, forever. Let faith arise. Let faith arise. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Come on, church. Let's believe Him. Our faith can arise because we believe in him, we trust him, we count him as faithful. Amen? Do you believe you have a faithful God? He wants to bless your life, every single area of it. He loves us. He's on our side. He will never forsake us, never leave us. In our worst moments even, he's there for us. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. We have a nice Spanish-English version today for you. Se guarde y bendiga, que extienda su amor y te muestre el favor. Dios te mire con agrado y te
let's join heaven as they worship him up there as well This is our prayer. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. Que te cure con su gracia hasta mil generaciones, tu familia y tus hijos y los hijos. To see hopes May His presence go before you And behind you And beside you All around you And within you He is with you He is with you forsake us. His favor is there in everything that we put our hand to. When he has our hearts, we have his favor. Amen? Amen. Amen. Look at someone before you're seated. Give them a smile and say good morning. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Again, it's great having you with us today. And those of you that are guests to Naples Church, uh, or those of you that are watching online for the first time, my name's uh, Paul Fossil, and I pastor Naples Church. The gal there speaking at the end is my wife, Maria, and it's a privilege that you're here. You know, one thing that I'm going to ask you is if you're watching online and you're looking for a local church, please come and visit us in person. Those of you that are here today, you know, one thing I always ask is I'm going to challenge you to come three times just because you can't get to know us after one visit and what we're all about. And so, you know, come, come a few times and make sure you go to our Welcome Center, you know, grab the welcome card, fill it out, go to our Welcome Center. And, and we have a, a booklet there that tells you our purpose, our vision, our values, 
what we're all about. Plus, we have a gift for you just to say thank you for being with us today. Um, and so all these things are important for your next step. And, and one thing I do ask, though, is this, is that if you do not make Naples Church your church home, make sure you find a church to be a part of. Today, I'm in growth track, and so I will leave. I won't be able to say goodbye to you. I'm back there. We have a great big group back there, a growth track, and that's the next step of what you'll, you know, we're going to ask you to be a part of. Uh, but I talk about the importance of being in your place and what God has for you. And God does have a place for you to belong and be a part of because God did not create church to happen in rows. You know that, right? He created church to happen in circles because we need community. And you don't need community to be a Christian. You need community because you're human. Would you look to the person to your left, right, make sure they're not aliens, that they're human? <laughs> All right, they might turn green, they might turn colors, I don't know, but if you watch, you know, the Avengers, you know, people can ship, you know, shape shift and all that. We're not that type, okay? We're here. But we're human, everybody. And we need each other. Nobody can do this thing alone, this thing called life alone. So it's great having you, great being a part. And again, I just always want to thank you for your giving, your financial contributions to God's kingdom and his purpose. It's not just a contribution, you're investing in people's lives. You're investing in the future. You're investing in your future. Everything you give is going to come back to you, the Bible says. What you sow, you reap. When you give out, it's going to come back. How many know when you give anger out, guess what's coming back? How many know when you don't let people out during season and you refuse to let somebody pull in or pull out? You are only causing yourself problems later. What you sow, you reap. Amen. And so I just want to say thank you for your giving and just what God is doing here. And, you know, and as you know, our goal is to increase 20% in our serve teams, in our giving, and the last one is in your personal growth. So when we have our ladies' meetings, our men's meetings, when we have our small groups, we have a great small group. Our small group sessions are coming up. We have great... Uh, classes in the back, our Sunday school classes. Um, our next one, I think, is already full, uh, but sign up for them. If they're not full, go online. And uh, Dr. Steve is going to be teaching back there in the next couple of weeks just on faith, fitness, life, and health, and the mixture of the two, and just how to get, you know, to sustain things. And he does a great job balancing the spiritual and the natural. Uh, That's what he does in his life. And so he'll be teaching class, a couple classes back there, and we're always going to have these things going. And our most important thing is your personal growth in your family and your life. So, so important. And you're helping other people come in here by your giving and to learn. Now, as we're growing, I'm asking you to have patience, okay? Last Sunday, and this is about the only time you'll hear me talk numbers, is when it comes to vision and purpose of the church and what we're doing. You know, last Sunday we had over 1,700 here. We're growing uh, a lot. And so many of you, when you tried to leave last week, it was very backed up. And what happens is, is people who aren't really going to church on a consistent basis, when it takes them 10 minutes to get out, people tend to only come once every four or five weeks when parking and traffic is hard. And so we want to eliminate everything we can like that, but that little dome church is doing construction, so there's only, they park on both sides over there, so it's just one row, one lane trying to get in and out. We have our main one here, our main exit and entrance, and help me know Mockley Road is starting to get busier. Thank God there's lights, so at least when the lights, it stops and more people can get out, but we're working at getting traffic officers out there. But here's why we need to continue to increase and stay ahead of the growth. As you know, your giving is to expand our children's building. We had 360 in children. It's last, before summer, we were up, we're over 100 over summer. We need space. So we need to build that out. Our youth, they're busting at the, you know, they're really growing. And so we need to get these areas, you know, built 
so we can continue to grow and stay ahead of the growth. But not only that, this is the other reason we need to increase by 20%. Because we own, many of you know, we have 40 acres here. We own the land from this side of the church over to Mulder. And one of the things we can do is put in a one-way temporary road. So we can just put gravel down, put dirt, gravel. Have a, so when it's time to exit, we're going to have right up here at the curve, somewhere over here, we're going to put a road over to Mulder. So when we're leaving, everyone who goes out that way, you guys can go through Mulder, go out, turn, you're out, you're out of here, heading, heading out to the estates. Um, but not only that, you can go straight across there too, so you don't have to do the U-turn. So this way we'll have three entrance and exits to get everybody out. So it's important for all of us, you know, to, you know, and I don't know how much it's going to cost, but it'll be some. It'll be a, you know, pretty good amount. But if we all do it together, we can continue to grow. But not only that, you know what? You won't be frustrated. <laughs> Amen? So let's do this thing. And then, you know, we'll be going to four services here probably before the end of the year, uh, before, before um, season, because we always grow a lot in season. God's doing great things. And I'm saying all that because I want to thank you for what you are doing. And those of you that are here, help us out so we can continue to grow and reach God's kingdom. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for your blessings and goodness in our lives. Lord, we put you first, and when we put you first, you take care of the rest. And Lord, I'd, we'd rather give you the first part of our lives so the rest is blessed than give nothing and not have you a part of it. So help us to always remember to keep you number one in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning and welcome to Naples Church. My name is Paul and I'm so excited you're here with us today. If it's your first time, take a look at the back of the seat in front of you and grab a welcome card. Take a moment to fill it out and bring it out to our welcome center at the end of our service today. We'd love to say hi. Are you new to the faith or looking to deepen your understanding of what it means to be a Christian and get involved here at Naples Church? If that's you, join us for Start Here. This time together will provide a solid foundation and practical guidance on how to live out your faith and actively participate in the life of Naples Church. Start Here will take place Sunday morning, September 3rd at 10:15 a.m. Don't miss this opportunity to grow in your faith and connect with others who share the same faith journey. We look forward to having you with us. Discover a transformed you with our Sunday school class, Better Habits for a Better You, led by Dr. Steve next Sunday at 10.15 a.m. This class combines natural and scriptural principles to help you cultivate positive habits that empower personal growth and create a more fulfilling life. Space for this class is limited, but you can secure your spot today by registering online at NaplesChurch.com or in our lobby today. Thank you so much for joining us for church today. Today is an exciting day because today we get to make an impact on our community by hosting a blood drive. If you did not pre-register to donate blood today, that's okay. They are accepting walk-ins all morning long. So help us reach our goal of 100 donations by donating blood and saving lives today. You can head out to the blood drive table in the lobby after service to get started. As always, for more information on all of our upcoming events, you can visit us online at NaplesChurch.com. Have a great day. So uh, I, uh, I was just told by Karen that our, um, who works for us, uh, we do have a traffic officer out there today, and so he'll be at Rivers, so if you go out the Rivers, and you know, the back entrance and exit of the church, um, he'll, what he'll do is they'll stop all the flow of traffic, so that way you can just turn left to go into town, and that way he'll clear that out, and everybody who's got to go that way can, will be able to go out when they stop, so um, that w is going to be great, and, but we still need to get that road built so we can make it even a little easier for everybody. So let's talk about faith. You know, we're in a series uh, called Empowered Living, or Living Empowered. And it's all about, you know, part of our vision 
you know, is uh, our vision is a place where love works. We want this to be a place where love works. We don't want this to be a place of gossip works. Let's try that again. We don't want to be a place of gossip works. Hey, did you, you know, and most Christians gossip in the form of a prayer request. Hey, did you hear about so-and-so? We need to pray for them. Right? I mean, you know, and, and so we disguise it. Watch out for that. Don't get, don't get hooked and drug into that. And, uh, you know, we don't want to be a place where people talk behind our backs. And that's why I'll say from the pulpit, you know, we have to deal as staff with things in the back room. When you look at the Bible, you see Paul, the Apostle Paul, answering questions that Timothy and different ones would write. And they would say, hey, watch out for the, this guy. This guy's really evil, so stay away from him. These two are causing problems in the church. Stay away from them. And so people are people, and at times we have to deal with things, and we have to talk about stuff in the back, behind closed doors as a staff. And if that ever gets to you, and one of my staff members starts telling you about somebody else that should be private, I want to know, because I don't want that. If doctors and lawyers have to be private and keep their mouths quiet, how much more should we spiritually, as Christians, do that? Amen? Amen. And so, you know, the Bible says this. If you have a problem with or a situation with somebody, just go to them right away. And one of the things of where a place where love works is that if anyone ever comes to you and starts saying, oh, can you believe what, you know, pastor so-and-so did or this happened, just stop right there and say, wait a minute, let's go find out what really happened. Let's go ask him right now. And take them and just walk to them, and that stops everything. And then you get the real story. How many know there's three sides of a story? What are they? Yep, in marriage, it's his side, her side, and then the right side. Right? And so there, there just is. And so it's just best to go right to the source. And so we want to be a place with love works. I love this song today we sang in Spanish and English. That was just amazing. That new gal we have, amazing voice. We have another guy that's Spanish. He's a professional singer. He's going to be singing. It's just so fun to see what God's doing. He's building the teams so we can continue to grow. And it's so cool. But I remember Pastor Roger sitting down here with his wife. And we were singing a song. This happened a few years back. And we're singing one of our songs. And there's a song that we would do. And it would just be a little bit in Spanish. Not much, just a little bit. And all of a sudden, we're singing this song. And all of a sudden, I feel this tap on my shoulder. And this gentleman came down and tapped me right in the middle of music. And said, why are we singing in Spanish? Don't you know this is an English-speaking church? And I'm like, gee, I didn't know that. No, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. <laughs> How many know you don't say everything you want to say? <laughs> and even as pastor, there's thoughts that come, you know, and I'm like, don't you know we're, we're, we're white and we speak English? And I said, oh, well, I'm sorry you feel that way. That's all I said. And the individual left and came a couple more times and have never seen him since. Naples Church is a place where love works. Jesus never came to reach one ethnicity only. Right? Did he? And I'm, as a pastor, I'm very proud. We are very multicultural church. And, you know, we're all ages here too, from newborn to 102. And God... God needs every single one of us, amen? And I've always been told this, the church should look like the city. If you're reaching your city, your church should look like your city, not just one group or another group, or one age or another age. And so that's why it's important to us that we all get involved, young and old, because when you look up on stage, you should see everyone represented old and young, and in between. 
our, one of our guitar players, he's, he's over 70. That, he, he's, and he looks cool. He wears a baseball cap every Sunday, puts it on backwards. <laughs> right? And then you, got, then you got Karen over here with the fan blowing her hairs going like this, just <laughs> rocking out. And then you got Pastor Brandon who's young and he's jumping around. It's, it's awesome. And that's the way life should be and that's the way church should be. God loves everyone. Amen? Amen. But, you know, but okay, let's get back to it. But we need faith. You need faith. We need faith to grow. And last week, uh, you know, I spent quite a bit of time talking just about tests and struggles and things we've gone in our life. And as you know, there's three kind of key points that we're looking at during this series that we want to help learn to use our faith and grow in faith, but we got to know this. Faith is trusting ourselves less and God more. God needs to be number one. Don't put your trust in you. Put it in him. We humans fail. God never fails. Second thing is this. We live by faith, not by moments, and that's why I shared what I did last week is because over all these years, We've had so many moments of wanting to quit, and we didn't even get into ministry moments, guys, that things that have happened to us that people have done to us in 25 years of ministry that that was more harmful and hurtful that we've went through than sometimes family things. And so we're all going to go through that, but we can't quit. We can't quit. And then God's faithfulness is measured over a lifetime, not a day, month, or week. And so I tie that in with the other one. Don't, we don't measure, we don't understand everything. But don't base God's faithfulness on a day, a moment, a week, or a month, or even years. Because we all go through things. But I know this, God's faithful. God's faithful and he'll help you. He'll see you through. And so I say all this is because your greatest battle is going to be not quitting. Your greatest battle will be to fight the fight of faith and not quitting. And so you need to stay the course. And so that kind of sets up what I was going to talk about last week for today. And so let's look at Hebrews 10, verse 32 through 38. And this kind of, from Hebrews, it explains the life of faith and it completely coincides with what I shared with you last week. Think back in those early days when you first learned about Christ. Remember how you remained faithful even it meant terrible sufferings. You know, if you look back when you first got saved and people said things about you and did things about you, you know, we were so young in faith, we didn't know any better. We were just like, oh, they persecuted me. Praise the Lord. You know, and we are just ignorant sometimes and it's just like well people don't like it I'm just I'm going to keep coming to church but have you noticed the longer you go on the more harm that happens it builds up and builds up and builds up and it changes you have you ever noticed that when we don't let go of hurts and pains and we allow them to accumulate they become weights, as the Bible says, lay aside every weight and sin that so easily upsets your faith. And this is why if we don't let things go in marriage, after 10 years of marriage, you're, it's a super heaviness in, against your spouse because you, you've just kept it all. And the longer you keep it, the harder it is to unload But when we're first saved, you know, it's like, oh, I'll luck and love, and it just seems easier. We got to keep that attitude as we grow. You remain, even though it meant, there it goes, it says, remember how you remained faithful even though it meant terrible sufferings. Sometimes you were exposed to public ridicule. You were beaten. Sometimes you helped others who were suffering the same things. You suffered along with those who were thrown into jail, and when you owned, and when all you owned was taken from you, you accepted it with joy. And I don't know about, I don't know one person here that would probably accept that with joy very well in, 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 in our day and age. You knew there were better things waiting for you that will last forever. And, and, and this is, goes to everything I was trying to talk about. We walk by faith, not by sight. 
we have to remember there are better things waiting for us than on this earth. We can't focus all of our hopes and faith and what life is going to be, what happens here. This world is sinful. It's faulty. It's not going to be perfect till we get to heaven. That's why we got to keep our eyes on heaven. Not on, oh, I didn't get the raise or I didn't get that new car I wanted or I didn't get this. That's temporary. That shouldn't be about our existence. It should be about eternal. Next verse, guys. So do not throw away this confident trust or your faith in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. Again, we walk by heaven's standards, what's coming. Patient endurance. Everyone say patient endurance. All right, turn to your neighbor and say, you need a whole lot more patience. Okay. Now, now turn to your other neighbor and say, you need to endure pastor's bad jokes. Okay. We need patient endurance. Amen. And uh, so that you, uh, now this is what's interesting. Patient endurance is what you need now. Is, this verse is like for, for us today, even though it was written thousands of years ago. We need patience now more than ever. Because none of us, most of us are failing in good patience. Right? Like I always say, the reason I know is because we're all Christian. And when we go to Chick-fil-A, it's Christian. And we can't even have patience there. <laughs> all right? So we're, we're in trouble. Um, so that you will continue to do God's will. That's why I always say, will you still be serving him in a year? What if the market tanks and everything crashes at the end of the year? Are you going to still be here? I hope so. God brought you here because he knows what's coming up and he's preparing you for your future. Well, what if it stays great for the next seven years? Awesome. But we live for eternity, not the moment. Then you will receive all that God has promised. For in just a little while, the coming one will come and not delay, and my righteous ones will live by faith. See, he's saying you have to live by faith because Jesus is coming back. How many, I, I, I don't know about you, but I hope Jesus comes back in our lifetime. Now, I just need you all to do something for me, okay? Your second, your, you guys are amazing. Your, your second service but I need a bunch of you to become first service amazing. <laughs> okay? Because if I can get you to become first service amazing, it helps every area in this church, growth-wise. Every area. And not only that, but when Jesus comes back, first service is going first. <laughs> so they get the best seats, first class. They get the best service, the best pick of homes. Okay, so I'm just saying, come to first service starting next week, all right? It'll make your future amazing. And my righteous one will live by faith, but I will take no pleasure in anyone who what? That also means to draw back. Don't draw back, go forward. So what is this saying living by faith, Hebrews is talking about living by faith. So I'm going to just break this down into just simple each verse and why we're to need to live by faith, okay? And that is this. Verse 32 tells us faith in life won't be easy. Verse 33 says people won't like your new found faith. Verse 34 tells us that faith in God's word helps us endure tough times because we have a promise of the better afterlife. Verse 35 says, never stop believing no matter what is lost. Keep your confidence in God. Don't ever stop serving no matter what is lost. Well, pastor, I had to declare bankruptcy. God can give it all back. 
You still have your health. You still have your wisdom. God, you still have him. Life isn't over. Well, I got a divorce. Life isn't over. God's the redeemer. God's the redeemer. Verse 36 tells us that to fulfill God's plan for your life, it's essential to have patience and endurance. You will ultimately receive your heavenly reward by staying committed to his path. But you got to stay committed. How many know we could um, tie this into lots of areas? We could take these principles tied into our marriage. How many know in marriage you need patience and endurance? Right? You got to stay committed to the hard times. To the hard times. Um, Verse 37. We must keep our eyes, heart, will, mind, and hope looking forward. Or we're going to quit. See, that's why we can't look at what our faith gives us on this earth and what we accumulate that God gives us. Because then our eyes are going to the left and to the right and we get off course unless we keep looking straight at him. All those things will just distract you. They're just distractions. We got to keep our heart and faith towards heaven. And lastly, in verse 38, it says this. To finish our course, we must live by faith. We have to live by faith. So in a nutshell, Hebrews discusses the events that will occur during our lifetime. All right? And how those who have faith should not falter due to temporary setbacks. Okay? Hebrews discusses the events that will occur during our lifetime and how those who have faith should not falter due to temporary setbacks. We're all going to have them, but keep going. Some setbacks are going to be relational. You know, one thing I want to do in the future, and we're going to talk, talk about this a little bit more. Many years ago, we had this service. It was called an I Do Sunday. And what we did is we offered everyone living together the opportunity to get married. Because God never created us to live together outside of marriage. And it's not God's best for your life. And the reason when Jesus went to the well in Samaria, and there was a woman there, a Samaritan woman, that was drawing water and... and Jesus was there, had a one-on conversation. He had what we call a word of knowledge, word of wisdom into her life. And she said, I'm going to go into town and I'm going to tell everybody the good words you've said to me. And Jesus made this comment about how she had four husbands. And then he said, the one you're living with is not your husband. Jesus does not recognize you living together as marriage. Now, is that fatal? No. Because what? Naples Church is a place where love works. What does that mean? You've heard me teach this in multiple ways. When Jesus came to the woman caught in adultery, right? Jesus met her with grace and then said, go and sin no more. Grace, then truth. And he told the people, those who are without sin, throw the first stone. So don't throw stones at people if they're living together, sleeping together, all those things. Is it God's best? No. It's not his best. But I believe that God wants to meet you with grace and say, hey, how about now the truth is, bring me into it. And let me help your marriage. And so in the future, we're going to do another service for those of you that will make that next step. Because if you've been together and you have kids, it's just time. It's just time. Take that next step and bring God into it the way he ordained it to be. And I'm telling you, it, it... 
We still have people here today from that day. One of the couples, one of the guys is my advisor, one of our, my team. It's just, it's amazing what God will do. So I'm going to challenge you to take that next step. But we've all failed. And don't look at, oh, you know, poor me. You know, don't just, we've all made mistakes. We've all failed. And, and maybe you haven't even looked at it that way. But how many know we're human and we're going to fail? And this is why I like this next story about Peter. Because as we leave here today, as we close, I want you to see that even still, we make mistakes, and I show, shared some of mine. I'm telling you, Jesus' number one guy failed a lot. But Jesus was right there to help him. So when you look at Peter's life in 1 Peter 1, 5 to 7, and we're going to close with this, it says, who are kept by the power of God through what? Faith. We're kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you've been grieved by various trials. Next week, we're going to look at the human side of grieving because of trials and what we need to do. It is vitally important you know how to deal with grievance in your life, with grieving because of tests and trials and loss. But it says you've been grieved by various trials that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, your success cannot heal what only faith can heal. You can have all the money to buy whatever you want to try to take away the hurt, but it doesn't heal. Only faith does. That's why he says living by faith is more important than gold means the world system, the world's way. Though it's tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So this is why we need to understand and have wisdom about Jesus and live by faith. So let's just move into this next, you know, in, in, into next week and looking at trials and being grieved because it's so important. But look at Peter's life and look at Peter's perspective, okay? Peter was not merely an apostle. Jesus picked Peter to be the leader of the apostles, what God expects more from you when he puts you in a position, there's going to be trials you're going to go through. Others won't. And no matter where that is, we're all going to fail. But sometimes the weightiness of being a parent and the marriage fails and the kids being part of that, that can crush us. But it's not fatal. And so when you look at Peter being put in that head place, think about Peter's life. Peter's name is mentioned in the Gospels more than anyone except the name of Jesus. No one speaks in the Gospels as often as Peter did, and Jesus spoke more to Peter than any other individual. Jesus rebuked Peter more than any other disciple. Jesus addressed Peter as Satan along, um, alone among the disciples. How would you like your boss? You're Satan. <laughs> now, I know wives, you've called all of us husbands that. We get that. You're Satan. No, I'm just kidding. But see, here's the thing is, if you're going to be successful, you have to know how to deal with your mind. If you're going to finish, which we'll talk about, why did Jesus call Peter Satan? Now, he wasn't calling him Satan. He was speaking to the Spirit, motivating Peter. And the reason Jesus rebuked that, that words from Peter 
is because Peter was repeating thoughts that Satan put in his mind that he said, Jesus, you can't go there and do that and suffer. What happened is, is Jesus is like, listen, I had to rebuke that, what you're saying, because I can't let those thoughts come into my mind of me not going to the cross. I can't even begin to yield to those thoughts or my flesh won't want to. So Jesus was rebuking the thoughts that were coming that Peter yielded to. Then it goes on to say, Peter confessed. Um, Then Peter was the only disciple who dared to rebuke Jesus. Peter confessed Jesus more boldly and accurately than any other disciple. Peter denied Jesus more forcibly and publicly than any other disciple. But Jesus praised Peter more than any other disciple. So stop and think about Peter's life. How many times he spoke out of turn. He yielded to the enemy. He cut a guy's ear off. Any of you do that yet in here? Pulled the sword, got upset and mad. But wait a minute. He was the one that said, I'll never forsake you, Lord. And he was the one who did first and then I'll cause everyone else to scatter. How would you like to be him to completely walk away and cuss out and deny he ever knew Jesus? Can you recover your faith from your failures? The answer is yes. Don't quit. Stay with him. You can recover from any failure you think you've had. God will forgive us. God will help us. But just stay the course. Don't determine the moment you're in for everything. Amen. Bow your head and close your eyes as we close. I just want to make sure that you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior in here today. Maybe you've never come to the Lord, you've never asked for forgiveness because, like Peter, you're very aware of all the mistakes and things you've done. Whatever that is. Maybe some of you are here and you've gotten away from the Lord and now you're back wanting to get things right. Most importantly is I just want to make sure everyone in this room knows heaven is your eternal home. I want to make sure you leave here right with God. So if you're here today and you say, Pastor, I don't know if I'd go to heaven. If I passed away, I'm really not sure my, my standing with God. You can leave here today knowing 100% you're forgiven, you're in right standing with God, and heaven is your eternal home. And it's not based on what you do, works. It's based on what you believe, and it starts with believing in Jesus. So the Bible tells us those who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. The way I like doing that in here symbolically is in a second I'm going to ask you to raise your hand and look at me. And what you're doing is you're lifting your hand and symbolically to the Lord and saying, Lord, I'm calling on you. I want you in my life. And once I see your hand, you can put it down. But that's your act of faith. That's your moment of faith where the raising of your hand is your faith statement saying, God, I want to live by faith. I want to live for you. And so with no one looking around, if you're here today and say, Pastor, that's me, I need to make that step, get my life right. And if you'd pray with me, would you just lift your hand and look at me? And once I see it, you guys can put it down. Awesome. Those of you in the section, many hands. You guys, awesome. Thank you so much. Over here, thank you guys. Here, you guys, thank you. Awesome, man, thank you. Just want to look one last time. Awesome. Thank you. There isn't anyone. Awesome. Thank you. Please know, there's nothing in this room you, you've ever done so bad or thought so bad that God won't forgive you. This is where it begins. This isn't the end. It's the beginning of really a journey 
that God's going to lead you on that's going to help you tremendously. And if you're watching online and this is something that's speaking to you, please repeat this prayer with us. So would everyone repeat this with me right now? And church, I know a lot of you have done this, but we just always ask you to repeat this as support for those that are in this room. So everyone say this. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you today and ask for forgiveness of my sins. I make a decision today to believe in Jesus, to be my Lord and Savior. I'm now forgiven. Heaven is my eternal home. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen? Amen. How about a round of applause for those that prayed?